I, I know the conversations are good, but if we don't find the seat, I will begin to sing. I love microphones, and trust me, you do not want that. <laughs> She's running now. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. Thank you all. Everyone's still having a good time and getting a lot of information, learning a lot, I'm sure, as I am. Some great speakers. And, and I'm excited to um, introduce to you our keynote speaker here. Toria Blanchard is a 34-year-old Detroit native who moved to Paris in 1998 as an on pair to look after two children. After a year, she moved back to the U.S. and obtained a degree in French from Wayne State University. In 2003, Blanchard became a French teacher at Consortium High School, a Detroit charter school, and taught for five years before pursuing her dream to open a crepery in Detroit. Good Girls Go to Paris Crepes was established April 21, 2008. The ideal for the business originated from the time she spent in France watching crepes being made on the street of Paris. Using the money from her 401k and savings accounts, Mrs. Blanchard stopped teaching and set up shop in the 48 square foot space in downtown Detroit. That Good Girls location is now a 2,000 square foot space located on Woodward next to the DIA at the Park Shelton in Midtown. Rodin, or Rodin, Rodin. Rodin, a bar next to the DIA, also at the Park Shelton, is scheduled to open late summer of 2012. Oh <laughs> Toria is, a very act, is very active in the Cotillion Society of Detroit, where she serves as a board member and was recently honored at the White House as one of President Obama's Champion of Change, based on her entrepreneurial endeavors in Detroit. Good Girls Go to Paris Crepes has been featured in our magazine, Detroit Business, Midwest Living Magazine, The Oxygen Network, Detroit News, Detroit Free Press, NPR, All Things Considered, The Craig Fowl Show on WDET 101.9, New York Times, and New York Post. Here is Toria Blanchard. Hi. <laughs> Hello, everyone. All right. The last time I was here, I remember coming here for the focus on, it was like a photography. Uh, they got students from all over the metro area. We did a photography project. I think I was the first year, so it's really cool. I, I didn't take the elevator up. I kind of looked at the photography exhibit on the second floor. It just reminded me of that, like, wow, it's almost 20 years ago. I'm dating myself, but anyways. So how many of you have heard of Good Girls Go to Paris Crepes? Heard of it? Yeah? Do you guys know, all know the story of how it got started? All right, so pretty much I'm going to not scare you, but just tell you my story of how I got started. Um, all that was true, I was a French teacher for five years, and I loved teaching French, but I knew in the back of my mind I wanted to do what I really loved. And I said, you know, life is short, so what do you really want to do? I said, okay, well, let me backtrack even more. I was at a spinning class at the YMCA, and I missed the class. So I just thought, you know, am I this busy in my life that I missed the spinning class? So I hopped up on the bike. I said, you know, Toria, what do you, what do you really want to do in your life? What makes you so busy? Why are you running around so much for what? And I said, I want to open up a crepe shop, and I want to collect as many French film posters as I can, because I just I love collecting French film posters. So I said, okay, that's what I'm going to do. I hopped off the bike and went downstairs and I saw a 48 square foot stand. I mean, literally, no bigger than this podium, maybe this much where my coffee is. And that was the first Good Girls. And I called up the lady that owned the space. I said, are you leasing? She said, yes. I, the next day, I quit my job as a French teacher. And, you know, of course, everyone was like, yeah, go ahead, do your dream, right? No. Of course not. They were like, what are you doing? You are giving up your, 
your, your paychecks, your 401k, your insurance, your security net to go start a crepery in Detroit in a closet sized space. What are you doing? And my mother was also very thrilled and no, no of course not. it was horrible. She begged and pleaded for me not to do this. But I remember listening to this little voice in my head and I said, you know what? If it all fails, if I lose all my money, I can always do what? What would you do? Go back to teaching. So there it is. So the first week I started that crepery. Um, the idea for that was in April. It opened in July. Uh, oh gosh, a week after Bastille Day, so it was mid-July. And the first day I had five customers. So Toria went a little bit into panic mode. I thought, okay, what can I do to get customers? I could dress up as a crepe. I could stand out on Woodward. I could flag people down. But luckily, uh, Sylvia Rector over at the Free Press wrote a, a charming little article about what I was doing. And I got customers to come. And I got even more customers and even more customers. I, I was very encouraged. Meanwhile, I was living very frugally and you know, putting all my money into the business. And I stayed at that location for about a year. I learned a lot. Then in 2009, I moved to another space at the Park Shelton. And at the time, Midtown wasn't Midtown. It was very, you know, it was just in its infancy of, you know, all this rebuilding going on. The space that Good Girls is in now was a, um, gosh, it was like a hair salon with wooden panels and carpeting on the floor and the whole nine yards. So luckily at the Park Shelton, um, they wanted to develop their commercial space. So they said, we'll build this out for you if you come here. So I said, okay. And all I had to do was just provide the, the equipment and just the infrastructure, but everything else they did about fifty to $70,000 worth of build out. And that was just me being fortunate, me being, you know, just knowing someone that said, hey, I think this is a great idea. I'm gonna build this out for you and incorporate this into your rent, which is, you know, it's still reasonable. And that's how that all came to be. And again, I'm gonna backtrack to that in a, in a bit when we talk about networking and how much I hate it, but there's a certain way to network that works and a certain way to network that absolutely does not work. We'll talk about that in a second. So, oops, oh, this is so strange. So I opened up that space and in 2010, I opened up, uh, I expanded that location uh, a bookstore was next door to me, he moved over, and I expanded. 2010, I had the idea to open up a bar on the corner space. While all this was going on, uh, the Park Shelton is at full capacity, both commercially and residential. So they built out all the spaces next door to me. I had my friends, uh, you know, Leopold's, he opened up a bookstore. Another lady opened up a, a t-shirt shop. A cafe that was supposed to be a, an art gallery opened up next door to me. All the spaces were built out except the last space. And I said, I'm going to open up a bar. I have no money to open up a bar. How do I do this? I didn't have any money really to open up Good Girls. I just used my 401k, which everyone, Susie Orman, everyone will tell you not to do, but sometimes you have to do, right? Uh, so. Wow, I, how did I do this? And, and again, this bar is almost done. They're putting in drywall right now. It should be done August 18th, and I'll be open in September. But, you know, I just, I had my parents cash out their retirement. I had my boyfriend loan me $30,000, yay. I used a credit card. You can actually max out on American Express. You know, uh, I mean, I took all the money I can gather up and use people who really believed that this was, I mean, it's a bar right next to the DIA in Midtown on Woodward. How can this fail, right? So I, you know, that's what I did. And I matched fund, my funds with the DGC, which is the Detroit Economic Growth Corporation. Uh, Midtown Inc. put in some money, but I had to front at least half of it, right? So that's how that all came to be. And this has been a two year long nervous breakdown. Uh, every time I run into people that haven't seen me in a while, they say, wow, you've lost a lot of weight because it's just been nerve wracking. But when you want something and you truly believe in something, you will sacrifice, I've learned, everything, everything that in order to get what you need to get. 
Now, how many of you want to open up your own shop or are in the process of that? And Yeah, you want to open up your own restaurant. I don't like to sugarcoat things um, because I feel that the lessons I've, I've learned, there's been a lot of um, lessons. Good Girls Gross Point opened up last year, but I actually closed it down because I didn't focus, I closed it down last week actually. I didn't focus enough time I think on that location, I think I just picked the lo wrong location. There it is. There's been a lot of casualties in the road to Rodan and Good Girls, everything like that. I was gonna open up um, uh, a place in Hamtramck uh, called Udi's. It was a breakfast lunch place. Had the whole place, you know, uh, gutted out in a way, not gutted out, but just renovated, the whole nine yards. Luckily the person that owned the space, he didn't let me, yeah, I didn't have to pay rent while I was doing this. So in April, it came time to open up. I said, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do it because I wanna focus on Rodan. It's just too much going on. Oh gosh, I had a deli space out in Southfield. This was in 2010. I had to pull out of that one. You know, it was called Good Girls Deli. So there's a lot of, <laughs> I know, right? There's a lot of, what I like to call casualties in the road to, you know, learning. And, you know, I, again, I was not, a uh, a business major. I've actually spoke at the Ross School of Business last year at U of M. And one person asked me a question. They said, you know, if you want to be an entrepreneur, what, you know, like us, we want to be, we want to be entrepreneurs, what, what would you suggest that we do? Of course, I said to them, why don't you drop out of this business school, take the money that you were spending for this, and open up your business. Does that make sense? And they couldn't, like, scoop me out of there fast enough. 